about this. I noticed that the way the track is, it looks really technical, and even you were having some trouble getting some consistency down that back stretch. Yeah, earlier in practice, the jumps were all packed up nice and hard, and they, after practice, they went in there and walked them with the dozer, so they were a bit soft, and it's getting a bit squirrely out there, you know? It's going to take a lot of mental toughness to do 20 laps, and and uh, I just got to get my, my, my Bridgestone tires out in front and with my bike and me. And uh, if I can get in the clear, I think I can do it all right. Well, that's worked for about the last month and a half. Yeah, hopefully it'll work again. Okay, hey, taking a look at the schedule after the uh, Superdome in New Orleans uh, for round 14. It's on to Indianapolis for not only a great show, but it'll be our final appearance on ABC. Our television coverage nationwide coming after NASCAR on ABC's Wide World of Sports the following Sunday. After Indy, the season's finale at Las Vegas. All the tickets are not sold yet, but you better hurry. The 125 shootout's proving uh, to be quite a contest this year, where the West's 125 champion Nathan Ramsey and the fast Casey Johnson will take on the East best. We're talking about Ernesto Fonseca. We'll see him tonight, along with Sellers, Way, Horton, and crew. Lots more coming up from Pontiac on Pace Supercross. Suzuki Fest 99, folks, step right up. Pick a selected Suzuki Sport bike and pick out $400 in free accessories. How about you, son? A Suzuki Katana 600 and a helmet? Or maybe a Bandit 1200 and a new leather jacket? It's up to you. There's lots to choose from. And choose from financing offers like zero down, low monthly payments, or low APR. But hurry in. Suzuki Fest 99 and soon. Hey, hey, no need to get nasty. Suzuki Fest 99, folks. Catch me. Catch me. Catch me. Catch me. Catch me. Only at DunlopTire.com. Here's how you can more than double your current life insurance coverage without paying one penny more than you are now. Call Best Quote. We'll prepare a free rate comparison of five top-rated term life policies that meet your specific needs. Here's a sampling of the huge savings Best Quote has recently uncovered. If that's less than you're currently paying, call Best Quote today for your free rate comparison. There's no obligations and no hassles. Simply the best insurance at the best rates from Best Quote. No salesperson will ever call you. Hey. I never want to see you again. <laughs> Wait, where are you going? Aren't you bummed? She took my favorite jersey. Welcome back to the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. Our qualifying heats uh, just concluded. And in the first qualifying heat, David Bailey, uh, Robbie Raynard ran the track like we'd like to see him run a main event. Uh, he, he just took out and, uh, with poise, hit the jumps just right, good timing, and his teammate Larry Ward from Team Suzuki right behind him in second place. Well, I like the first thing that he did to, to get the lead in the first place right after the, the first turn. He didn't have the whole shot, but he launched in the lead over kind of a risky ju uh, double jump that he was experimenting with through the whole race. That was the only flaw I saw in Raynard's uh, lap times, really, was that he wasn't consistent enough on that back straightaway where McGrath was a little bit better in practice and proved it in his next year. That back straightaway is going to prove to be a big obstacle for many riders. I was not quite impressed with uh, Mike LaRocco's uh, performance, even though he made it into the main event from the qualifying heat. Right. Well, while Raynard set a, a fast pace, uh, Larry Ward, his teammate, hung right with him, and those two pulled away from Lampson and LaRocco and took LaRocco most of the race to get around Steve Lampson. Once he did, he didn't really gain much time and, or really learn anything from the two Suzuki riders. It's too far behind. We've learned to always anticipate action when Ezra Lutz and Jeremy McGrath are in the same qualifying heat, and it looked like we might have that uh, apparent uh, right at the uh, very beginning of it, but no, it didn't turn out that way. Well, it was uh, Carmichael that just established a huge lead in the first lap, and then uh, McGrath just came out of nowhere, 
like he always does, found his way around everyone and into the lead while Lusk found himself on the ground coming out of the stands. I'm not so sure exactly what happened to him there, but uh, he's definitely going to have to get it sorted out in the semi. So McGrath looking uh, as dominating as ever. In fact, uh, Davey Coombs, I asked three prominent riders uh, earlier in the day who they thought would win tonight's race, and uh, it was unanimous, Jeremy McGrath. They're thinking Jeremy McGrath's going to win every race, and I think maybe, are they just getting ready for the Nationals now? Well, I think that might be a good point, Art. It's funny, the thing about Jeremy McGrath is this. He serves right now as the teacher for all these guys. I watch him in practice. He's always got guys jumping in behind him. They're trying to follow him. They're trying to learn his lines and everything. It's almost like a lot of these guys have given up. I think we've reached that point in the 1999 U.S. Supercross Series where it's a done deal. Everyone just assumes Jeremy McGrath's going to win these races. I'll tell you one other thing I've noticed. The closer Jeremy McGrath gets to a title every year, the bigger his points league gets, the stranger the color of his hair gets. Right now, I think it's like platinum. <laughs> well, I think what he has to do is to, to get ready for Vegas or whatever he's going to do there. He, he's got to have that white base coat so he can start coloring well, it. He came out with uh, kind of a purplish, uh, blue purplish hair last year in Vegas. So I think it's just a, a preliminary, don't you think? I think so. Uh, probably whatever he does, Randy Lawrence is going to do too. Those guys are, both have white hair right now, and last year they were pretty uh, styling in Vegas. We've got lots more action coming up. Semifinal round, good riders, big names are, are in the semifinals right now. Back with more action from Pontiac, Michigan after these words. He's been battered. He's been beaten. been bruised but now it's mankind's turn brace yourself for the backlash wwf backlash presented live by castrol gtx sunday april 25th on pay-per-view it's time for the nichols appliance center workout club Let's warm up with pushing a 250-pound Frigidaire refrigerator on our first delivery of the day. Then, break for lunch. I mean, you got any salt in there? Next, use those legs to thrust the Frigidaire into the home. Then, another quick break. Who had the café latte? Tune in next week for more tips brought to you by Frigidaire. Passion. Intensity. Artistry. Act now and watch over 100 Major League Soccer matches you can't see anywhere else. MLS ESPN Shootout, a season's worth of excitement. Don't miss a beat of the heart-pounding, heart-breaking action. To order, call DirecTV at 1-800-DIRECTV or PrimeStar at 1-800-PrimeStar. 1995 was to be the race for Michael Rocco at the Pontiac Silverdome. Number 10, Brian Swink, got by number 6, Jeff Emig, for first on the opening lap. Then number 2, Mike LaRocco, was next to put Emig back another spot, passing for second on the next lap. Mike would ride behind Swink, looking for his place to pass for the lead, and would do just that at about the halfway mark. On this pass, Jeff Emig lost more than just a spot to number 1, Jeremy McGrath. He lost his ride with a get-off. Number seven, Mike Kudrowski, would come home in third. For LaRocco, his second win of 1995. Welcome back to the Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan, as we've already seen some great qualifying action. Before we get to the semifinal rounds, David Bailey, let's take a look at the track map. Lots of busy work on a very difficult track. It is a difficult track. It's also starting to get rutted, and they're number four to the bottom left. That's the section that goes up in the stands. It does here every year. There by number five. That's where Lusk had his troubles approaching the triple. So taking a look at the actual track, this section over here to the left, if you don't get your timing right on this first jump right here, you can't do all the stuff down the rest of the straightaway. And also the approach right here to the whoop section, if you don't get that approach right, you can't go through the whoops as fast either. And tricky little uh, straight up, straight down plateau before the finish line jump. I really like what the track designers have done tonight. In our first semifinal, it'll be for six laps, the top five advancing to the main event. As we take a look at Jimmy Button on the Yamaha four-stroke, he'll be there along with Greg Albertine of Team Suzuki, Damon Huffman of Team Kawasaki, John Sebastian Waugh of Planet Honda. Pedro Gonzalez, Denny Stevenson. It's good to see Denny back in uh, Supercross action. Number 553, a big number. He's just coming off the arena cross circuit. 
Okay, the board is sideways, and we're set to go for the first semifinal action here from Pontiac, Michigan. Another great start for Huffman. Huffman, Huffman. yeah, number 31 with Jimmy Button right there, number 10. Well, this time Huffman does the necessary jumps down that straightaway to keep the lead, but that's twice he's gotten out of the gate faster than everyone. As they go up the hill into the stands, it's Huffman, Button, Sebastian Waugh, number 21, Greg Albertine, number 8, and Pedro Gonzalez, number 53. But the battle's out front. Look at Button with a great leap and move. You see all the ruts they face, too, as they approach the whoop section. It's like a little mini triple and then a bigger jump before you get in there. And Greg Albertine has just moved into second place in front of Huffman. So for the second time in a row tonight, Huffman's got the great start and then it starts slipping backwards. Well, I was reading uh, Pat Schutte's report today, all the latest gossip, and he was talking with Carmichael and Huffman about what it was going to take to get those guys up on the podium. And Carmichael was like, uh, well, that would be first, second, or third, I think. And Huffman said, well, you need to ride with a great start aggressive for the first five laps, and that's what he hasn't been able to do. Waugh went down, number 21. John Sebastian Waugh. And so that'll juggle the order slightly. Jimmy Button is still our leader with Albertine in second place. It looks like Albertine wants to take that number one position. Huffman is now in third with Pedro Gonzalez in fourth. Stay tuned. We've got more Supercross action from the Silverdome coming up. That's Honda. Everybody wants to ride for Honda. That's the house of racing. If you can't get around on that thing, you better look into another sport. The new F4, I think, is, is awesome. It's stable, it's fast, and it's going to be ready to rock. I mean, no Doggy dog, you know, you go out there, and everyone has one idea, and that's that they're going to win. My dreams were to be with Honda. I had always ridden Honda, so that's where I wanted to be. I just want to go out there and win every time I go out there. I want to be as fast or the fastest guy. Jumps ahead of the Honda CBR 600 F4. I want to have people hate me because I won't stop. And they're up. Get ready for this year's Triple Crown. ESPN Classic takes you inside the track for a look back in time at horse racing's crown achievement on Run for the Crown. But to get ESPN Classic, you got to call 1-800-CLASSIC. Nine half-hour specials reveal the inside stories behind every legendary race with insights from jockeys and race experts. Run for the Crown starts Monday, April 26th at 7.30, only on ESPN Classic. Call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Three laps to go in the semifinal. That's a tricky little section he just did right there. And again, the balance. You look overhead at these guys having to choose a rut, land in that corner. Damon Huffman in third. Quite a ways removed from the two top riders, Button and Albertine. And behind Huffman is Pedro Gonzalez and Denny Stevenson in the final transfer spots as Stevenson stays in front of Grayson Goodman. You know, what interests me, Art, is I never was that uh, fond of riding in the ruts. I know I've said that before, but there's races on the season, especially coming up to Indianapolis, Seattle, uh, here tonight, where they have where they encounter ruts. But none of these guys' practice tracks have ruts, so I don't know where the heck they get used to it. Yeah. Now, Jimmy Button seemingly is doing a good job right now as we take a look at Pedro Gonzalez. He's in Floyd. Pedro, former Mexican champion, came in second place in the 125 uh, Western Division in one year. And then uh, ran through a series of injuries before coming back with Kawasaki of Mexico. Well, he just decided to go for the double over the finish line rather than the triple, and Denny Stevenson caught up to him a little bit to go back out front. As we watch the rider, let's go to Davey Combs, who's with Jimmy Button's mechanic. Hey, Brian, you guys almost had a teammate back this week. Doug Henry almost made it out, didn't he? Yeah, he had a little trouble with his uh, snow cross. Hurt his finger, had some surgery. Uh, I think we hope to have him back by Las Vegas. Think that would help Jimmy? 
Yeah, he's always better when he has a teammate around to talk to when he's walking the track and whatnot. But uh, after we got the bugs worked out today, he looks like he's going pretty good. Here's Jimmy Button in first place. Albertine behind him, 10 seconds over Huffman in third. That's a huge differential. I mean, this is this is a short race. They put so much time on Huffman, it's unbelievable. The white flag lap. And take a look at Denny, Denny Stevenson. Interesting, because this guy, 125, is a great champion. And now he's uh, in the arena cross uh, circuit, which is pretty short tracks. Interesting to see how his conditioning fares. Well, he's going to be tired, I can tell you that. This is a lot more demanding than an arena cross. But and I'll tell you, in the defense of the arena cross series, and, and those guys as athletes, the smaller the racetrack, and the, the shorter the race, the more intense it is. So you still exert an incredible amount of energy. Here you just have to do it a little longer. Plus you got two heats in an evening and two evenings in a row. Yeah, it's tough, no matter what. In fact, we've got more than just one 125 champion in this particular heat in the semifinals. Todd the Hoop won the 125 East back in 1988. And that year, Stevenson was fifth. The checkers now for Jimmy Button. Greg Albertine in second place, and we will wait a while before Damon Huffman comes around the corner to take the checkers in third. Pedro Gonzalez still in fourth. Denny Stevenson holding on to fifth in front of uh, Grayson Goodman, and it looks like they'll finish that way. That's exactly how they finish, and we'll be right back to the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan after these words. work they call me Pete. On my Suzuki Intruder 1400 they call me Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf on the Savage 650. Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf. It's Ms. Lone Wolf to you, mister. I quit staring at my Marauder 800. There are so many Suzuki cruisers to choose from. Everybody can be Lone Wolf. What sets some people apart? gives them the confidence to succeed on their own terms. It's no secret, it's the Wall Street Journal. Now you can have that confidence delivered for 13 weeks at just $36.75, just 57 cents a day. That's a 25% savings off our regular rate, which makes now a great time to try this limited time offer. Call now, 800-248-1300. That's 800-248-1300 for the Wall Street Journal. We don't get many shots up there. We get one shot, we're on the ice. You gotta practice, you gotta practice good. Let's go! Nice, nice. Breathe, boys, breathe. Hey, what if I was a fan? What are you gonna do? Very nice, very nice. Now do it again. Back in the uh, Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, out of the semifinal number one, Jimmy Button taking the checkered flag in front of Greg Albertine, Damon Huffman, Pedro Gonzalez. And what a nice surprise to see Denny Stevenson back after a, a long and uh, rigorous arena cross season to uh, to make the final in the main event coming out of this semifinal round taking that fifth and final spot. So Goodman and Waugh will have to go to the last chance qualifier. Let's get out of Davey. Thanks Art. Jimmy that was a great ride. That's about as good as I've seen you ride that four strokes at Anaheim too. Yeah. Uh, you know finally starting to get back you know get back into the groove of things you know getting hurt really took a lot out of me but uh, Paul has been real patient with me. Let me heal up and come back and we've been uh, been riding a lot the last couple weeks and uh, the 400 is working great out there so hopefully I can go out and make anything get another good start like I did and uh, put that Yamaha up front. Yeah, I was talking to your mechanic, Brian, during the race out there. We talked about the fact that Doug Henry was supposed to be back tonight, but he's hurt. Man, you're in that big truck by yourself. That's got to get lonely. I mean, you don't have anyone to push you. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely having to hold up the team colors, but hopefully, you know, I can go out again in the main event and uh, do it again. And, uh, you know, John and, uh, and and Doug are both getting healthy, so, you know, it'll be a, a welcome to see those guys come back at uh, Glen Helen. I hope to see you back up here after the main. Thank you. Getting set for the second semifinal round, you see number four. That's Ezra Lusk right near the uh, dog pound. And the uh, number 28 is Heath Voss. Now, Voss took a pretty big hit earlier today in practice. He cased it, and uh, but he's back there, a true privateer, and has had a really fine effort after starting the season a little late, getting his team underway just a little bit late on the season. 
He's still out there, though. I've ridden a number of times here back in the doubleheader days where you're injured for the second day, just trying to salvage points. Lusk is lined up just to the inside of the starter box. There he is again. Same place he lined up in the heat race. Everything was looking good till he had problems later on out, out on the racetrack. His teammate Tortelli, number 44, is lined up about five guys further towards the inside. So Sir. I think the inside's going to be an advantage really. in the first corner. Former Supercross winners, Ezra Lusk and Sebastian Tortelli here in the semifinals trying to make the main event in Pontiac, Michigan. Tyler Evans also there along with Koikita, Frenette, Terlicki, Campbell, Lawrence, Armstrong, Knuckle as they rev them up and get ready to go. Lusk, like shot out of a cannon to get the whole shot. The boss who was right next to him is second to last right now. He got a terrible jump off the gate. So this problems continue. Ryan Terlicki in second place, but he's getting big pressure right now. That just might be the slowest corner in all of Supercross. <laughs> at, at 180 degree up in the stands here in Pontiac is you slow down a little bit too much when you get up there and you kind of just creep it around. Tyler Evans in third. And Tyler Evans now making a bar to bar battle of it to the inside for second place. From Salinas, California, the American Suzuki Tyler Evans. Nice move. Ryan Turlicky in second place, Evans in third. Koikita in fourth. Sebastian Tortelli. And then Heath Voss. And remember, only the top five will make it to the main event. The rest go to the last chance qualifier as Ezra Lusk pulls out in front in first place. That's Turlicky, and Turlicky is going to get a challenge coming up here. They got a little battle going. These are the privateers, too, and they're just having to watch that factory Honda horsepower just motor away from them. Evans up into the seats, trying to get in. A wheel in front, but shutting the door is Terlicki. Look at this battle. Evans 66, Terlicki makes a mistake. And Evans takes over second place. Second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth are just really... You can throw a blanket over all of them, Martin, and Tortelli's at the tail end of it. Ezra Lusk simply pulling away. Now has a four-second lead on Evans in second place. Evans, Terlicki, Koikita. They're all just following each other, too. Even Tortelli surprised me a little bit. These guys don't get a little more creative and try to make something happen, because one of these guys is not going to the final. That's the excitement of the semifinal round. Tortelli just jumped his way into the main event, it looks like. And coming back is Heath Boss. Gives him a little tap. This is not the kind of race that Tortelli would like. He turned this a learning year at the beginning of the season. But it's tough to learn from that far behind the good riders. Well, everything's a little bit more inconsistent back there. He took a tenth in St. Louis, and now he's taking on Koikita of Japan. Tortelli, the Frenchman. Koikita, the Japanese. And Tortelli is having a hard time winning that international battle. Koikita with the inside move. Looks like they're starting to get a one-line, fast line developed to that loop section there. Well, Tortelli, Tortelli must be getting frustrated. Koikita doing a nice job of fencing. Oh, there you go. And finally, number 44, Team Honda, moves into fourth place. Five more riders will qualify when we return to Pace Supercross. Shh, everybody, get ready. Okay. There's me, and there's my 4x4. I'm picking up some speed. Here I go, up. Woo! Look at me move! And I look great doing it! Woo! Yeah! <laughs> look out, everybody! Here comes the coma man! You're the bomb, baby! The bomb! The man! Eh. So, what do you think? I am everyday people. Okay, out there. Let's get one thing straight. If you have a family, a kid, a house, 
you need insurance. But more than that, they need you to have insurance. Now, I know what you're thinking. You've got the body of an 18-year-old. You're gonna live forever. The only thing they could do you in would be lightning or a cattle stampede. Ouch. Hey, this isn't about you. It's about your family. So protect them with term life insurance for money. A $100,000 policy costs as little as... That's cheap, and that's per month. Guaranteed for the first 10 years. Plus, it's convenient because you can get it direct from the money family, a name that's been around longer than you or I could ever hope to be. It's just a few dollars a month to call them. It's quick, easy, and you can get started right now over the phone. Term life insurance for money. It's the least you can do. Call money and find out how to help make your family feel more secure. If you call now, we'll even send you a calculator and insurance worksheet to estimate the coverage you may need. Nice. Supercross McGrath's looking to seal his sixth Supercross championship, but Lusk is looking for 25 grand. Toyota Trucks business the Thor parts and limited pace Supercross. Watch round 15 from Indianapolis Sunday, April 25th at 5 p.m. Eastern on ABC Sports. It's Jeremy and Ezra in the Battle of the Burn for 25 grand in the Vans Triple Crown. Presented by Mountain Dew and G Shock. Watch the winner take all. April 25th only on ABC Sports. Pace Supercross is brought to you by Dunlop Tires. In motorcycle tires, Dunlop is superiority. A battle going on for third. As we take a look at Tortelli, he makes the move into third. Well, anybody ever wonder what a block pass was? That's <laughs> what a block pass is. Perfectly executed by Tortelli. Gets around to Licky. Politely. He didn't have to go in there and make that stick. He's got Evans in front of him, number 66. So well, now, Evans, Tortelli, yeah. Terlicki on a white flag lap now with Voss behind Terlicki. It looks like Voss is going to battle Terlicki all the way. Koikita slipping behind Voss. Voss has managed to salvage the day by getting himself in the main event. Maybe a little bit sore, but I'd rather be sore in the main event than sore in the seats. Watch it. Final lap underway. Evans run a nice, nice consistent, nice consistent race right here. This is a world champion versus a privateer. A two-time world champion at that. 250 and 125. Here comes Tortelli to the inside. And he takes over second place. Look at Evans. Hops back up on the platform. And they rub a little plastic. Hey, you're not such a big shot after all as he looks back to Tortelli. Take that. What a battle going on. He fought. The checkered flag waves for Ezra Lusk. Evans, Tortelli, Voss, Terlecki. Oh, what an interesting battle way behind our leader, Ezra Lusk. And we'll be right back for the comments from Ezra as Davey Coombs makes his way to the victory podium right now. We'll be back in a moment. Uh-oh, that new car finish is fading fast. You need the amazing professional polymer sealant. Apply lightly to your car's finish, let dry, then wipe off. Put your car to the acid test. Hydrochloric acid eats right through carpet and metal filings. But protect your hood with polymer sealant, and there's no trace of damage. Polymer sealant coats your car like an invisible glass shield. It bonds to your car's finish, so nothing penetrates. Car dealerships charge $200 for the same protecting formula. The original polymer sealant is yours for only $19.95. But wait, also receive the original poly wash. Repels water and eliminates water marks. There's more, a four-ounce bottle of the polymer sealant scratch remover. Remo Remove surface scratches from any car finish. Call now and get a second 8-ounce bottle of sealant free. Original polymer sealant, polywash, and scratch remover, only $19.95. To order your polymer sealant, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-909-3800. Or send check or money order for just $19.95 plus shipping to the address on your screen.
Sports Century's 50 Greatest Athletes, a year-long celebration. Number 39, Walter Payton. Friday at 10.30 on ESPN. Presented by General Motors. Take a look at those who advanced out of our second semifinal round here at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. We've got the team Honda riders, Ezra Lusk and Sebastian Tortelli, but look at how the privateers did. Evans, his third main event, making his tenth main event, is Voss. Terlicki making his fourth main event. That means Coy Keaton and Lawrence will go to the last chance qualifier. We've got some excellent talent going to the last chance qualifier tonight. Let's go down to Davey. Yogi, it looked like that was all business for you out there. I know you don't like to ride the semi, but as complicated as the track is tonight, maybe a little bit of good came out of that. Well, you know, it's like my mechanic said on the start line. You remember the last semi you rode? You rode it at Anaheim and you won. And uh, I said, yeah, you know, that's true. Hopefully we can do the same thing here. The bike is working awesome and we're feeling good we we're watching on the back straight over there it looked like one time you almost stunned the whole way through it almost slowed down do you have to do that every lap to win this race tonight I believe so you know that one section you really have to be consistent through and I'm, th I'm thinking about where I'm gonna go in that main event you know you can go for it and go for the good line or you can go for the consistent line so what's it gonna be well at this point in my career I'm gonna go for it <laughs> all right that's a good luck in the main thank you John Sebastian Waugh won the last chance qualifier. Grayson Goodman won a bar-to-bar -bar battle with Phil Lawrence to fill out the final two spots in the last chance qualifier. Ernesto Fonseca has taken the 125 East region by storm. The veteran observers are scratching their memories. For the last time, a pro rookie has started his career with four wins in four races. They can't come up with another rider to match Ernesto's pro 125 start. The 125 East versus Ernesto Fonseca coming up next. I've been racing since I was three. I'm a pilot. I like to fly a little bit. Those guys are tough to beat. No matter what, we want a Honda up front. Say I was just a little bit hairier than the other kids. They said I was hairy like a bear, and then I was Yogi Bear, and now it's just Yogi. Je m'appelle Michael Pichon, j'ai même trois ans, j'habite en France. I just feel like I'm on the right team and on the right place. Try not to think about who's behind you. You know, you try to always race in front of you. You feel like you can be free. Sometimes, after NHL tonight, I take my knowledge to a sports bar. There's always someone there who thinks his knowledge is the biggest. Then, I show them Supercross brought to you by Suzuki. During Suzuki Fest 99, get $400 worth of free accessories and great financing on selected models. From the Silver Dome at Pontiac, Michigan, number 100. Don't let the three digit number fool you. This guy has won four races in four tries so far in the 125 East. Fonseca leading by 34 points as we take a look at the point standings over Horton. Way in third, Ron Cotta, who is injured and not racing here tonight, in fourth. Brock Sellers holding on to a fifth position with Danny Smith closely back in sixth. The last round was a barn-burning affair with Fonseca winning it. But number 64, Kelly Smith, was on the way to winning on the last lap when someone fell out of the sky onto his bike. It's been a kind of a weird situation ever since, but, you know, there's, there's no hard feelings. I know it was a, an accident, maybe just not a wise decision, but... You know, it's, it's over, and I'm over it. I'm just ready to go race. Kelly Smith disappointed, but realizes now, after seeing the tape so far at David Bailey, that that's racing. Well, you know, if I was him, I'd be a little disappointed, though, because he was pretty much in the way of Fonseca, and I understand the aggression. That's how Fonseca's won four in a row, by being aggressive, but there really wasn't any room for him to triple there. 
Number 59 is Robbie Horton. He moved into second place in the point standings. Stefan Rancata's and Shea Bentley's injuries have really taken some zap out of this division, but the excitement that Fonseca has generated has been fantastic. Well, that's really made up for the fact that this field has kind of weeded itself out, and I'm, I'm kind of wondering tonight, especially what's happening with Nicholas Way. I mean, he just struggled in his heat race, barely made the main, and hopefully he got a little dose of... Uh, Mitch Payton or, or something to get him excited and for the main event get a decent start and ride aggressive. Because we got another not only Fonseca is in this lineup but uh, Yuri Dostal who took a third last in the last race in St. Louis is in the lineup. Brock Sellards looking for a breakthrough win. Tyler Evans it's his second straight week in both main events as we see Fonseca go into the gate. Ty Davis Jason Thomas. Some exciting riders getting ready, and an exciting rider just came into our booth, Casey Johnson, who started out so quickly in the 125 West. Let's go down first to Davey Combs. Hey, I want to go back to what you guys are saying about Nick Way. This is the homecoming race for Nick and everything like that. But you know what? This has been probably the worst year of his life as a motorcycle racer after dominating the amateur ranks as a mini bike rider and his 125 intermediate and everything. He comes out here, everything's gone wrong. He's snake bit. David, have you ever seen that happen to someone? Happened to me, Davey. <laughs> I can relate. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. And how you work through that and come out on the back side determines usually where which direction your career is going to head. He's still young. And he's lined up almost all the way to the inside about seven positions to the inside of Fonseca right here. So if he gets a decent jump out of the over the gate he should be able to control the first corner. The 30 second board has been up some time as we anticipate the start of our 125 main the superstars of the future. The top riders don't forget will gather in Las Vegas for the 125 East West shootout. We're almost set to go for the Silverdome in Pontiac Michigan. They're off and running. Who will get the whole shot? Fonseca gets there first. Fonseca who hasn't gotten every hole shot this year. Gets, seems to get the important ones, David Bailey. Yes, he does. And Nick Way, that inside paid off for him. He got a good jump, controlled the first corner. Gives Fonseca a little bump right there. Way in second, Brock Sellers in third. He'll give him a real battle. Well, you got the three favorites right now running out front. To be exciting. Joining us in the booth, Casey Johnson, who started off with a house of fire, like a house of fire in that 125 West before getting injured. Your observations, you see your teammate rubbing it with Nick Way, and Fonseca goes down. Nick Way got a good edge on him there. Well, what do you think, Casey? Well, I mean, uh, that was a pretty good move on Nick Way's part, but uh, Ernesto, left the, Ernesto left the door wide open. Ernesto Fonseca is back in seventh position. That's plenty of time in 15 laps. Well, plus he's mad. I guarantee you he's mad <laughs> now. And you know what? I, I applaud Way for going out and attacking him. He bumped him once up in the up in the uh, the loop that goes into the stands, which they're approaching now, and then he came back out and went for the inside pass. I think Mitch Payton had a good talk with Nick Way. It looks like it. As we anticipated anyway, Nick Way is our leader. <laughs> Leading the first laps of this season for him. Brock Sellers in second. Danny Smith of FMF in third. Josh Olaf is in fourth. As Fonseca now is still in seventh position. Can't seem to get around the pack back there. Let's take another look at the bump. David Bailey. Well, first of all, you're going to see the bump right on the swing arm. He gets right into the, tries to spin him around. He almost spins out himself, number 23. Nick Way right there. And the second time, he just comes right in, takes the line away. Fonseca, I think, was surprised by that. Really wasn't able to react. Nick Way coming off his, uh, equaling his best performance in the last round at St. Louis with a fourth place finish. Well, Fonseca has just jumped his way back into fourth. He can see these guys up in the top of this hill right here. If the pace doesn't quicken out front, he's going to join this battle again, and I guarantee it's going to get good. <laughs> 
as we saw in the last round in St. Louis. Fonseca making the pass on Kelly Smith. And look at this. Nick Way and Brock Sellers going at it down the loop section. Way, Sellers, Danny Smith, bang, 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 and Fonseca not that far away in fourth. Casey, when you got to come from behind like this, you know you got three tough riders ahead of you. What's going through your mind? Well, at first of all, I just want to make retain, remain calm, you know, calm, and uh, not do any main mistakes. You know, this is gonna be a good race. Got Kawasaki guy and two Hondas up there, so uh, and all these three guys are capable of winning. Nick Way, a lot of native state Michigan fans cheering for him. Danny Smith Danny looks Smith. like down again. And we're getting a collection of riders as they can't get the bike out of the way. Well, you can see the flagger right here. He should be actually get out into the racetrack where people can see him. There's an AMA official out there doing a little bit more good than the flagger was. And that's what caused that. It was in a blind spot. While that was happening, Fonseca made a huge mistake. Lost a little bit more time to the great battle we're looking at out front. Fonseca is actually 10 seconds behind the first two riders, Nick Way and Brock Sellers. Could this be the breaking of a string of victories for Ernesto Fonseca? Well, Sellers did his best job he could in the heat race earlier this evening to try to beat Fonseca in a heat race. Boy, that was exciting. Too, Almost it? did it. Fonseca still got him in the Sellers last corner. Sellers to the inside on Nick Way. Oh, the fans are loving it here at the Silver Dome. They're on their feet for the 125 main event. This is a great battle, don't you think, Casey? But they, they may be slowing each other down a little bit. Uh, they might be slowing each other down a little bit. Looks like Ernie might be running a little tense trying to catch up. But, Brock uh, Sellers has really needed this as a, a breakthrough win for him this year, if he can hold on. I don't think he's been in the lead yet this year, so I think he might try and pull a lead and just... Uh, get some comfortable room out front. You're absolutely correct. He is, this would be the first lap that he has led all season long. If he can cross the finish line, holding off Nick Way. Way having a little, little fish tail as he comes out of the whoops. We'll be right back with the exciting finish of our 125 main event from the Silver Dome and Pontiac after these important words. Suzuki Fest 99, folks. Step right up. Pick a selected Suzuki Cruiser and pick out $400 in free accessories. How about you, sir? A Suzuki Intruder 800 and maybe a jacket? Or how about a Marauder 800 and helmet? It's up to you. There's lots to choose from. And choose from financing offers like zero down, low monthly payments, or low APR. But hurry in. Suzuki Fest 99 and soon. Hey, I don't make the rules. Suzuki Fest 99, folks. Golf Digest presents 50 ways to lower your score. To get greater distance, turn your right foot out. For a better backswing, don't slide. Turn your hips instead. Now, lower your score, drive longer, hit straighter, and play your best golf ever with the 50 new stroke-saving tips in every Golf Digest. Call now for your risk-free trial issue. If you like it, get 11 more issues, 12 in all, for just $19.97. Plus, get this stroke-saving video free. Call 800-417-1200. Top players on the ladies' tour tee it up in Georgia at the Chick-fil-A Championship. Begins Friday at 1 on ESPN2. We're at the halfway point. This is our leader, Brock Sellers, FMF Honda, number 27. Casey Johnson, your physical... Well, as we take a look at the Honda stopwatch, and you can check out the intervals now. About a six-second lead, but Fonseca now is starting to move up on Nick Way. Casey, let's get back to your situation personally now. Your injury took you out of the 125 West season. When will you be able to come back? Well, I'm going to try and make my comeback for the Glen Helen National. And uh, I just started riding a couple days ago, and uh, I feel all right. But it's going to be pretty tough to come back and, and, and race with the guys like Ricky Carmichael and Talon Bowen. You know, those guys are going to be going real fast. So you're not going to try to come back in time for the shootout in Vegas? No, I'm just trying to be ready, you know, and I want to be 100%. So, uh... I'll just have to see those guys at the Glen Helen National. Well, that's a wise decision. Any, uh... Tyler Sorry. Evans leaves the action, holding his wrist. Looks like it's a tough break after putting in some pretty fine laps tonight. You know, Casey, having watched both 
been involved, of course, in the West Coast and then watching the East. You got any uh, prediction for how that shootout's going to turn out? Well, I mean, uh, all these guys go real fast. You know, Brock's, uh, he keeps, keeps it up on two wheels. He just might win the thing. Ernie's done really good. I think, uh, you know, the West and the East can be a good race, and uh, I'm definitely going to be there just to watch if I don't get to race it. I think that's going to be a good one. There's Nick Way, number 23. He's getting challenged now. Arne. A big challenge from Ernesto Fonseca. Dan Way hold it off. Can he stay on the podium? Well, I thought he just made the mistake that was going to drop him to third, but coming up short on the triple there, but Fonseca did it as well. He's got to be pretty tired right now after going down the way he did. Looks like he's thinking more of Fonseca than what's in front of him, though. Now he only goes for the double there. Whoa, and Fonseca went for the triple. Nick Way with the edge goes to the inside. Let's see if Fonseca now can zip through the woods and move into second. That was a pretty easy pass. You see both these guys are exhausted from giving it all they've got to get to this point. But Casey Johnson to Brock Sellers. Compliment. Brock Sellers in that he has pulled away and uh, has not been pacing himself. I want to make sure the fans didn't misunderstand me. Brock Sellers' best finish ever was a second at St. Louis. Not the last race at St. Louis where he DNF and took a 22nd place in the last round. Brock Sellers really needed this particular type of a race here tonight. He took a third in the opener at Tampa, a second place in Atlanta, and a fifth place in Daytona, winning heat races in all three of those. He won the heat race at St. Louis, but ran into trouble there. So to bounce back with this kind of performance shows a lot of grit. Well, he's been talking like he had something for Fonseca and could win a race. And it's just nice to be able to go out and back that up. And tonight, he has looked fantastic. He's starting to pull away even more now. Let's go to trackside and Davey Combs. Yeah, I'm trying to get our Nick Ways, but can't talk to us. He didn't want to, but Dean Gibson with Brock Sarts, he's ready. Hey, you got to be stoked on how Brock's ride. Yeah, he's been working hard, man. He's been having some bad luck the last couple of weeks, but uh, his start's been on the last couple of weeks. Last week, we had a, you know, a little bad mishap, but uh, his starts are down. I told him. Charge. He had a good race in the heat race. He knows he can beat Fonseca, and he's back away, so he's riding good. Brock Sellers making his way through the lappers now. Sellers 11 seconds over Fonseca as he is putting a close to this lap. When he hits the finish line jump, there'll be only two laps left in this race. The last two rounds of 125 action, we've seen it get physical. I'm curious to see if Fonseca has anything to say to Way after this race, because he may feel a little bit like Jeremy did in St. Louis a couple of years ago when Lust came in on the inside of it. With a very similar type of a move. Nick Way in third. Olaf is quite a ways back and forth. So it looks like Nick Way might get his first podium of the year. He went out and tried. Gave it everything he had. Probably used up a little bit too much of that. Battling with Sellers to have anything left for Fonseca, who once he made the pass, really hasn't pulled away much. Sellers on the triple. When he comes around this time, we'll see the white flag waving. He just seems to get this track more and more dialed in every lap. It is the final lap for number 27, Brock Sellers. Casey's it tough to sit up here and watch this action? Well, I'm just so happy for Brock Sellers right now. Uh, you know, uh, I know Sir Fonseca is my teammate, and he's been doing an incredible job all year. But you know, Brock's gonna he can keep it on two wheels. He's gonna experiment. But, you know, a really good feeling that uh, you know Nathan Ramsey and, and me have experienced this year, and uh, it's just an incredible feeling. And I know he's gonna love it. As Sellers goes up into that Paris style, up into the stands, he is the leader with Fonseca in second, way in third. Bohawk in fourth, Demuth in fifth, Skag sixth, Horton seventh, Dostal in eighth position. That looked pretty cool from up here. He just laid that thing flat. 
crowd liked it. He's got another triple yet before he gets to the finish line, John. That's one of those things to do on the last lap when you're leading. You just try to whip it, and you're so excited. You just want to do anything, you know? There's Brock's older brother. His name is Marcus, and man, does he have a smile on his face. Pulling for his brother, number 27. You know, his brother works with uh, Brock so much. You know, I've stayed at Brock's house, and this just must be a great feeling for the whole family, and I'm really proud of him. The checkers for Brock Sellers, his first 125 victory. A celebration is going to start right now and continue through the evening. Here's Ernesto Fonseca. He'll have another turn to go before taking second place, looking back to see where Nick Way was. And Fonseca comes across in second, Way right now in third. Those will be the guys at the top of the podium. But the most proud is this young man right here, Brock Sellers. He also captures the very first FMF win. We'll be right back to hear from a happy champion after these words. Used to be you could customize any part of your bike except the tires. But now, create a striking design from the ground up with the bold new Cruise Max from Dunlop. Performance and style with custom options like classic black, wide white, or raised white leather. Whichever design you choose, you'll make a statement without saying a word. Cruise Max from Dunlop. I love working here. It's exciting feeling like we're changing things for the better. At Zurich Direct, there are no surprises. You call us and we give you a free quote on high quality term life insurance with no strings attached. And these rates are up to 70% less than what some other insurers charge. I mean, why pay more than you have to? Hi, thank you for calling Zurich Direct. This is Wendy, how may I help you? It really is simple. Well, Mr. Madden, you're 42 in good health and you don't smoke? That's great. A 10-year, $250,000 policy is just $23 a month, and your rate is guaranteed. Everybody has questions when they call in. They want to know they're doing business with the right company. <laughs> You'd be amazed how many letters we get from people just saying thanks. Well, you can choose a 5, 10, 15, or 20. Coverage can start in just a sure, few weeks. Sure, I can help you with that. I'll just... Leave. Absolutely. I think everyone should call Zurich Direct. But then again, I'm probably a little partial. <laughs> call 1-888-591-LIFE. Zurich Direct, a unit of Zurich Kemper Life. Beauty, adventure, drama, all these and more can be yours in the wonderful world of art. And with this free art test from Art Instruction Schools, you can find out if you have the interest and desire needed to become a serious art student. To get your free art test without cost or obligation, call this toll-free number. Don't delay, call this toll-free number now. Call 1-800-344-8300. Welcome back to the Silver Dome, everyone. The streak has been broken. Ernesto Fonseca, who won the first four 125 East races in four races, did not win here tonight. As a very hungry FMF Honda rider named Brock Sellards picks off his very first 125 victory. As we take a look at the standings, here tonight, Sellard, Fonseca, Way, Olhoff, Demuth, Horton, Skaggs, Dostal. Let's go down to Davy Combs. You know, when I saw you finish up those laps, Brock, I was thinking I was going to tell you, congratulations, you finally beat Ernesto Fonseca. But man, this is your first win, and it's FMF Honda's first win ever. Yeah, I'm really, you know, I'm really happy where I'm at. I mean, FMF Honda ran really great out there. I'm glad we finally got a win in. I mean, we've been struggling all year. Always had the speed, but, you know, I've had the bad luck, but this time, you know, I had, you know, the better luck, so it just helped out. I was watching your brother, Marcus. I know he's been with you for your entire career, what, 17 years of racing. That has to feel good to be able to share this with him, too. Yeah, it's great. You know, we have the brother to brother. He's my best friend in the world. I mean, it just, our bond is, you know, better than anything. We just get along so great, and to share it with him, having him here, I knew it was going to happen, so I made sure he'd come to every race. <laughs> Congratulations. Listen, we're going to step right over here with Ernesto Fonseca. Ernesto, it had to come to an end sometime. Yeah, you know, you can't, uh, you can't be perfect all the time. And uh, Brock is a really good rider. Uh, 
I'm happy for him, and you know, I'll just have to uh, do a better job next week and uh, try to pull another win. I know you got out front early, but then you had the problem with Nick Way. Tell me what happened. Yeah, he kind of he kind of came a little too hot in there, and you know, blocked past me. That's racing. Uh, you know, it's just uh, aggressive move, and uh, that's racing. I'll get. Uh, I guess. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's just uh, one of those things that you can't do anything about it, and. Uh, if you can't, do, if you don't do those things, sometimes you, you know, those things make you win. So that's a good, that's a good move uh, from him. And uh, I'm not like he didn't uh, knock me down or nothing. So taking a look at the 125 point situation now, Fonseca, of course, still in the number one. Uh, well, he's in the driver's seat with 122 points. But now Nick Way's third place performance here tonight. Moves him into second in the points, 15 points behind Ernesto Fonseca. Brock Sellers moves into third in the 125 East Point situation. Last year, McGrath came into Pontiac with a 52 point lead and left with only a 31 point lead. Anything can happen in Supercross. Will someone step up to stop the number one man, Jeremy McGrath, as he makes a bid for his sixth? Supercross title. The 250s are coming up next from the Silverdome. It's the most powerful custom on the planet. Six cylinders. Six cars. 1,520 cc's. Only one motorcycle in the world can cruise like this. The Valkyrie. From Honda. Available at Loudon Motorsports in Leesburg, Loudon's only motorcycle dealership. We depend on our vehicles for just about everything, and the life and safety of your vehicle depends on quality preventative maintenance. At Texaco Express Lube, we're dedicated to providing car care at its best. Our experienced technicians will give your vehicle an 18 point star service oil change using Haviland Formula 3 motor oil. We're conveniently located, open seven days a week, and you don't need an appointment. And every time you visit Texaco Express Loop, we become partners in helping the Loudoun community. Texaco, a world of energy. Deal out of the Sports Center catchphrases, but honestly, we make this stuff up right on the spot. Uh, welcome aboard flight 149 for right field. This is a non-chewing flight. It's never iffy if it's griffy. That blows. It must be a homer, Simpson, because the pitcher just went go. Oh! And because the catchphrases are so organic, it keeps the show fresh. Four! I am the most popular player in all the land. Yahtzee! Pace Supercross is brought to you by Toyota Trucks. With you for the long haul. The fans here in the Silver Dome, they're anticipating a great 250 main event as we look forward to it. Jeremy McGrath, who has a points lead of 50 points. That's the equivalent of two races. Surveying the track right now. As we take a look at the point situation, McGrath has that 50-point advantage over Mike LaRocco, and then, then it gets really tight. Pashone and Ward tied for third. Ezra Lusk has not finished out of the top three the last three years, and he's only five points out of third. So we've got a good point situation behind Jeremy McGrath, that's for sure. Mikel Pichon is in a good position to do well this year, and he's the subject of this week's Honda close-up. Mikel Pichon, a four-time French Supercross motocross champion, came to the United States in hopes of more championship titles. He did just that in 95 and 96 by winning the 125 East Supercross Championship for Team Pro Circuit Kawasaki. Although he won the title in 96, he had one of the most horrifying crashes in Supercross history. It came in Atlanta. Michonne had to step off his bike in midair to avoid landing on a downed rider. Fortunately, he was not injured seriously. However, his luck wasn't as good during the 97 Supercross opener in Los Angeles. Michonne, then riding a 250 for Team Suzuki, went down during his heat race, breaking his leg. It ended any hopes for competing that year. He rebounded nicely for the 98 Supercross and Motocross season, even winning the overall at the first Outdoor National. With such great results, it's no surprise that Team Honda confronted Pichon about riding for them in 99. It was a dream come true for Mikel. 
I was riding Honda. I rode Honda for many, many years. I won all the championship that I won was on a Honda, and uh, I really like the bike and the, the way Honda, you know, the way they work, you know, they always uh, want to win championships and everything they do, they want to do it really 100%. And, uh, and also because uh, when I was younger, all my uh, heroes were riding on the Hondas, you know, like Rick Johnson, David Bellet, Jean-Michel Bell. Mikel has finished on the podium four times this year and is currently in the thick of a three-way battle for third place in the championship points race. Mikel Pachon, this week's Honda Close-Up. Mikel Pachon hoping to better his third place performance in the last round at St. Louis. And of course, Robbie Raynard. He's looking for his best finish ever. His best was a fourth in Phoenix, but the big guy is Jeremy McGrath. He has not won since 1996. Ezra Lusk has taken the last two victories here in the Silver Dome. As we take a look at the starting grid, Ezra Lusk leads it off with Jimmy Button, Mike LaRocco, Mikel Pichon, and Larry Ward. And David Bailey, your impressions now as you take a look at this starting grid. Well, you see Carmichael right there lining up ninth, number nine. He's due for a win. Uh, also, Sebastian Tortelli, he looked aggressive. Didn't get the starts he needed, but he seems to be riding well. If he gets a better start, he could be a real problem for people. And Denny Stevenson right there comes out of arena cross. First time in a 250 Supercross main this year. Larry Ward, the fans on their feet. As we get a look from behind Larry, at that beacon down at the whole shot area. There you see McGrath, Art. He's lined up a little bit more to the inside this time. Robbie Raynard, Ward, Carmichael, LaRocco, Bichon, Lampson, Ferry, Button, Lusk, Albertine, they're all there as the 32nd board is up. Well, to McGrath's inside, he's got Carmichael, then Tim Ferry, then Raynard, then Larry Ward, then LaRocco, then Lusk. Albertine's lined up all the way to the inside spot. There's McGrath again, sandwiched between Pichon and Carmichael. A lot of talent on the starting line. The board is sideways. They'll start revving them up, and the gate will drop now any second. And our main event from the Superdome and Pontiac is underway. McGrath, the whole shot. And Ezra Lusk is behind him with Jimmy Button to Lusk's outside. Coming through the inside and moving into second place is Robbie Rayner, number 17. Boy, what a turnaround this would be for Robbie Rayner if he can hold on out front. It looked like Lusk had second locked up, and Rayner just shot right past him. Took it over. Rayner's so fast in the opening laps. That's where Jeremy's mm -hmm. usually able to get away. Maybe he'll be able to do it this time. So are the order. It's McGrath. Rayner. Ward and Lusk battling for third with Pichon in fifth. Jimmy Button in sixth. And behind Jimmy Button is Steve Lampson, Ricky Carmichael, Damon Huffman, and number three, Mike LaRocco. Keep your eyes on Ward. He made a slick move, got around Pichon. He almost had Lusk as well. Remember, he hung with, with his teammate Raynard in the heat race. Those two pulled away. The first lap completed, Jeremy McGrath notches another one. But Robbie Raynard is right there. Yeah, but look at that line of McGrath. Did you see that? He just looks back at Raynard going, okay, if, if you can't do this, you can't beat me. Jeremy McGrath has led 97 laps this year. I don't think it gets boring, though. <laughs> Robbie Rainer losing some ground to Jeremy McGrath is in second. But our real race might be with his teammate Larry Ward in third. And then two Hondas, Lusk and Pichon. Well, Ward is right there. This is his strong point at the beginning of the race. This race for so long has so much experience and so consistent in the top 10 throughout his career. He's able to take advantage of little mistakes in the early laps. That's when the guys are most vulnerable. You've been sitting around in the pits, up in your in the big rigs. You gotta be up to speed in a matter of moments, and Larry Ward does it well. Ward's had a good season this year. He's averaged two podiums a year throughout his career, and he already has four this season. In a battle with Lusk, number four. 
This is Ward's best podium year since 1995 when he had seven and finished second at the points to guess who, Jeremy McGrath. Now you can see their view up to the leader, McGrath, who surprisingly has not been able to shake Robbie Rayner, even though he's jumped that section and what we call on the, the back straightaway. Both times he's done it perfect. And Raynard has closed the gap again on him. As the riders gear for a push for second place in the points, championship points behind McGrath, Larocco, who is currently in second, is in seventh. Now Ward's sitting in pretty good shape right now because he's ahead of both Pichon and Morocco, who he's battling with for that position, second in the points. Look at Lusk. Lusk puts on a burst of speed to pass Larry Ward to move into third. Lusk only five points out of third place in the championship points race. He's had a second place finish and two third place finishes in the last three years. Lusk is in a good position right now. You still can see Jeremy. We've already got some laps in the books, and Jeremy is not out of sight. Lusk is a fast finisher, and as long as he stays out of trouble in the opening lap, which to me it seems like we've passed, he doesn't do anything but get stronger. And having won the last two times here in the Silverdome, we may have a little something for Jeremy in the end. Morocco has moved up to sixth after passing Jimmy Button. Out front, Jeremy McGrath and Robbie Raynard. Raynard's not that far behind. And as Rolovsky is trying to make a play to catch up with those two in third. Here's Mike, here's Mike LaRocco, number three. He's just losing time. He's got Button right behind him, then Albertine, then Ferry, top privateer right now. We're taking a look at the leader, Jeremy McGrath, and Robbie Raynard is putting some heat on the champion. But that's where McGrath pulls away every time. He's able to jump into that section and get a burst of power off the top of that sort of dual, uh, double plateau there, and he jumps, he triples, rather, through the rest of that straightaway. See the gap he got over Raynard right there? All right. Raynard's got to work hard to close that back up, only to lose it again in that same straightaway. Still behind Raynard. This is the order. Lusk, Ward, Pichon, and Larocco now. Number 17, Robbie Rayner. You can see the gap back to Lusk. That's not big enough to discount Lusk at the end of this race. Well, Robbie Rayner, even though he's fairly close to McGrath right now, is looking for his first podium of the season. And you can see the interval right there, just a bike lane. 14 laps to go. You know, Berluti's got to be happy with the way Robbie's riding right now, but there again, he's not able to go for that same section of triples. McGrath gets a little gap there. I'm surprised that Raynard is able to stay that close. Our field summary, McGrath, Raynard, Lusk, Ward, and Pichon, the top five. Raynard's previous best performance this year was a fourth in Phoenix. Well, if he can stay at least this close to McGrath, all the way to the final laps. That would be a great ride for him and be able to take advantage, possibly, of a miscue by McGrath working his way through the lap riders as we get towards the end. Our third place rider, Ezra Lusk. He's had his ups and downs this year. Crashed at Minnesota 20th. Now he's riding as hard as he can, but he seems to. The last three laps, the gap stayed about the same. And then in St. Louis in the next round, he moves back into the top five with a fine fifth place performance. Here's our leader, Jeremy McGrath. And Raynard still is not. Now, this time, McGrath messed up his timing and Raynard got close. So that's the difference through that straightaway art. If McGrath is able to triple through there, he, he can kind of get rid of Raynard for a moment. Out of the stands they go. Jeremy McGrath and Robbie Raynard making a race of it now, Davey Combs. I tell you what, I'm watching that, that section. David Bailey's talking on. You guys are exactly right, but the thing is, Jeremy starts it out better, but Raynard ends it better. And if he gets it right, David, it might be just as fast, and it's much less dangerous. Well, he's not, he doesn't have to take the chance. He doesn't quite have the confidence in his timing the way Jeremy does. And Jeremy 
towards the later part of this race when that gets more rutted and he's not unable to do it consistently and Rainer's this close still we may see a pass at the end of there as Jeremy comes around the corner and over the finish line jump there are now 12 laps to go <laughs> yeah Berluti putting on the board take him if you're ready when Jeremy can see that on his way by he's probably going yeah yeah he ain't taking nothing <laughs> Jeremy, as we mentioned earlier, fighting the flu early in the week and food poisoning just before. Holding off Robbie Rayner. This would be the week for Rayner to keep the pressure on at all costs. They've got such a gap now, Rayner could make a big mistake, get tight and still wind up on the podium. Here's the battle for fourth. Larry Ward, Michonne trying to make a move on him. Michonne from Team Honda, number five. Larry Ward, Team Suzuki, number seven. These guys are tied in points. Good observation. They've got something really to race for in the extra bucks. Now they're both ahead of LaRocca right now. So they're gaining a little bit on him. Morocco's five seconds behind Pichon. It's Pichon looking for the opportunity to cut in front of Larry Ward. Now they've got 11 laps to go here at the Silverdome. Stay tuned. We've got more Supercross action from the Silverdome coming up. Never before has there been a cruiser as comfortable as the Suzuki Intruder 1500 LC. A bike so smooth, so impressive, you'll want the end of the ride to be just the beginning. Discover the amazing hitting secrets of America's finest baseball school in Teaching the Mechanics of the Major League Swing 2. Tommy Mansky's powerful teaching video that features the same revolutionary techniques that have produced baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams. Parents, players, and coaches have been simply amazed at their students' rapid week-by-week -week improvement. These award-winning techniques benefit players of all ages and ability levels and make a valuable addition to any coach's library and a great gift. At just $29.95, call now. All weekend long, all kinds of racing. The race is on ESPN2. If it goes fast and looks cool, the race is on ESPN2. Rick, this is Jim Hopkinson, a producer with ESPN Fantasy Games. Uh, the Rick, you're a fantasy baseball owner. You going on strike is not going to bring Mo Vaughn back to the Red Sox. Take that up with their management. This is a business line. Now well, Pichon was forced to really dig deep and we had Huffman pressuring him at our last round in St. Louis. He was able to hold on. Proved he had the stamina to go all the way to the end. Larry Ward's best performance of the year, no question about that, the win in Seattle. He's had four previous podiums in this season. Lee McCullough, his mechanic, looks like he needs to get a signboard saying breathe. He was holding his breath there for a moment. Yeah, it's nervous time down there for the mechanics. They put probably more into this than the riders do. These guys spend their life working on that bike and keeping their fingers crossed that the rider's done his homework. Let's check in with Davey Combs. Hey, I think David Bailey had a very astute observation there a moment ago. Tony Berluti may have held that board out just a little too far because no sooner did Jeremy McGrath see that if he looks ready, take him board, that he took off. <laughs> yeah, he is starting to break the spirit of Raynard a little bit. He pulled away. Raynard seemed like simultaneously started to stand up a little bit more. That's kind of a sign of getting a little bit winded. Shown made the move on Larry Ward. Yes, Pichon, up a notch now. Well, looks like Larry is already kind of peeking over his shoulder to see where Button is. Mikel Pichon, a steady ride for third in the last round. And here's Mike LaRocco. And his target is Larry Ward. He may get both Ward and Pichon because LaRocco is carving out about a second a lap with both those guys. 
We're at the halfway point of this race in the Silverdome. That's a lot of laps left. You're already starting to feel it a little bit. Mike LaRocco with seven podiums on the season. And there you see LaRocco pulling up on Larry Ward. These guys are approaching the section and they jump off of this jump right here, land the beginning of that plateau. That's where McGrath is reestablished his timing to pull away from Rayner. Morocco gets around Larry Ward right there. So Ward is not comfortable through that section. That's where he lose all, loses all of his time. The top privateer in this race is Tim Ferry in eighth position as we took a look, take a look at Mike Morocco. Starting to get rutted. Jeremy McGrath has now leaped over the finish line. He's got eight more laps. Looking for his seventh win of the year. Well, while McGrath just cruises and pulling away in the process, Lusk has really closed the gap on Raynard now. So we're looking at a battle for second. There goes McGrath up the hill, back down. Heading up right there just on the other side. Both Raynard and Lusk. Number one, Jeremy McGrath. You know, this is known as Bob Hanna's house. As we take a look at the battle for second place now, Robbie Raynard has got the pressure from behind from Ezra Lusk. I was going to say, David Bailey, you were one of those who swept a doubleheader here in the Silver Dome. And back in those doubleheader days, boy, if you were on a roll, you could rack up the wins quickly. Yeah, but it, you know, it worked good for me there in 18, 1986. A couple of wins. Here comes Ezra Lusk. Ezra Lusk moving into second. But it can work the other way, too. I've had uh, some of those doubleheaders coming in here with a, a foot injury. Lost a lot of points, a sixth and a tenth. That was the year that my teammate O'Mara won the title, and well, I lost a chunk of points there. A good move by Ezra Lusk to get around Robbie Raynard. So Raynard now holding on, trying to get that final podium spot. And the battle for fourth is now heated up. LaRocco, and that's for show number five. Well, it's a shame Raynard didn't seem to have the stamina to hang on, but, you know, it's a step forward. If he, unless he blows it terribly somewhere, he's got the podium. That's a place to start, and he definitely kept McGrath honest there for a while. But shown in fourth, trying to hold off Mike LaRocco. Ford has moved back to six. Button is now in seventh. into that firm. Oh, those ruts are getting deep. Well, if they look bad from here, you know that when you get down on the racetrack, you're up to the foot pegs. <laughs> That's one thing I was never that comfortable with, and it was always rutted here. Morocco's got his timing down now. They didn't come through the whoops. Come up under the back tire of Mikel Pichon. Well, I've always said it, and it doesn't really have anything to do with the way that LaRocco has started throughout his career, but just the more laps, the better for Mike. If he's with 30 lap mains, he'd be on the podium every time. Mike LaRocco with only really one bad race on the season. That was the 12th place in Dallas when he had a crash with Ezra Lusk. But he started out the season with three consecutive third place finishes and then a second place in Seattle, a fourth, a sixth, a sixth, then that 12th in Dallas, a third, a sixth, a third, and a second in the last round. Pichon got passed by Ward. Larry Ward, number seven, on the Team Suzuki. This is the battle for third in the point standing right here. Morocco still holding on to second. Going to extend that if he can stay ahead of both Ward and Pichon. And Lusk likely might move into third. Should he hold the second spot? Well, it is tight. If it weren't for McGrath, we'd have one heck of a series going. <laughs> Jeremy McGrath 
He's won here three times in 93, 94, and 96. And it looks to me like we've got two guys on the racetrack that are putting in some hot laps to close this race. One is Ezra Lusk, who hasn't given up on catching McGrath, and Larry Ward right here. He is making a last-ditch effort to get around LaRocco and try to close in on the points. It would be very meaningful come Las Vegas time to look back and say, boy, I wish I could have passed him that one time in Pontiac. And I've won a championship by two points. You don't want to be having to go back and rewind the tape thinking, boy, if I just could have got that point, just go for it when you have the opportunity. Lusk is six seconds in back of the leader, McGrath, with four laps to go. Here's our leader, Jeremy McGrath. The all-time winner here at the Silverdome is Bob Hanna with nine victories. Bradshaw is next with four. And, of course, Jeremy McGrath could tie Bradshaw for the second winningest rider here in the Silverdome. You know, thinking about McGrath coming in here sick, Hanna came in here sick one year, and even in a, a pre-race interview, he was saying, yeah, well, these guys will all smile tonight, and then they'll get a... I'll kick their butts next week. He and I ended up going first and second. I had a sprained ankle, and Bob thought he was holding me up, so he let me by. Then I felt later in the race as though I was holding him up, so I let him by. And then he yelled at me after the race. Said, Don't you ever <laughs> let me by like that. Even though he let you by first, yeah, huh? That was a, a memorable race. Well, this great champion, Jeremy McGrath, is on his way as we take a look at the Honda stopwatch of gathering up his 59th career Supercross victory. Lust just got held up by a lapper behind him. And third place is a century away. Robbie Rainer, number 17. Check out LaRocco in fourth. A good 33 seconds behind the lead. And there you can tell LaRocco has answered the challenge Larry Ward placed on him a couple laps ago and opened that gap back up. There goes Huffman starting to charge a little bit. Looks like he can still get around Button before it's over. And Button is pretty close to Pashon. That might be the only battle left. As we take a look at the leader, Jeremy McGrath. Less than two laps to go. That was normally the straightaway where McGrath would be tripling. He lost a lot of time. Lusk, there's his lap time, a 106, a little longer than usual because the track designers got a little creative by shuffling the starting line around so they could get a sixth lane in here, a little bit longer track. Plus, it goes up in the stands at one point, so it's a longer main event than usual. Lusk now five and a half seconds in back of the leader. There's Pashon having some trouble getting through the lappers. Lusk never gives up. That's Damon Huffman, number 31 of Team, uh, Team Kawasaki, right in front of Pashon. Well, this is going to hurt Pashon in the points. He was in good position and just didn't have it. Both these guys getting around. It's going to bump him back. One lap to go. It is the final lap for Jeremy McGrath and crew. Amazing. Our points leader with a great chance to sew the crown up in New Orleans. That was a little ugly. Not the nice smooth approach that he's been getting up to that triple. Mm. Losing a little bit of time to Lusk, but it's all calculated. He knew he could slow up just enough to still get this win. This is the corner where last year he was knocked out. Right. He's working for his fifth consecutive win. His best last year was, was four in a row. Jeremy McGrath takes the checkered flag. As 
Trelask in second. And a long way back to third. But Jeremy McGrath, his seventh win of the year, his 59th career win. Five in a row, besting his longest win streak of last year, as we mentioned. And ties him with four wins at Pontiac. McGrath, a big favorite, as you can tell, from the fans here in Pontiac. So with the new do and all, he'll head to the victory podium to talk to Davy Combs when we return. Six hundred wild horses ridden by a madman who eats other men's dreams and backs them with glory chasers. Ivan Ironman Stewart, 16-time winner of the Baja 500. Here's how you can more than double your current life insurance coverage without paying one penny more than you are now. Call BestQuote. We'll prepare a free rate comparison of five top-rated term life policies that meet your specific needs. Here's a sampling of the huge savings BestQuote has recently uncovered. If that's less than you're currently paying, call BestQuote today for your free rate comparison. There's no obligations and no hassles. Simply the best insurance at the best rates from BestQuote. No salesperson will ever call you. There's only three things that you got to remember when you're shining the cup. It's this. Wax on, wax off, wax on. That was a trick question. You don't leave the wax on. There'd be a buildup. Pace Supercross is brought to you by Suzuki. During Suzuki Fest 99, get $400 worth of free accessories and great financing on selected models. And by Honda Motorcycles and the 1999 Honda Race Team. Honda, ride red. In this historic venue of Supercross, in fact, more Supercrosses have been run in the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan than any other. This was our 39th, and Jeremy McGrath comes out on top. As we take a look at the list of finishers, the top ten, Luskin second, Raynard with his first podium in third, LaRocco in fourth, Ward, Button, Huffman, and Pichon. Davy Combs, interesting evening. Yes, it was, but you know what? It had the same ending as it's had for a while now. Jeremy McGrath, 59 career wins, a little close to the 1999 title. Congratulations. Well, thanks a lot, Davey. You know, it's, uh, it was a hard night. You know, we started on the outside on the heat race thinking it was a little better line and got pushed out, so... Went, with, went, went to Bridgestone, got some better tires. Bike was hooking up good. We moved inside. I came flying out of the gate, and, and I was right in front right away, and that sure helped. Hey, I got to ask you, at one point, Robbie Raynard was staying pretty close to you about halfway through the race, but his mechanic held out a board that said, take him if you can. Did you see that? No, I, it, this corner here where the mechanics were, it's kind of hard to see, so I really wasn't watching his, but I kind of knew he was right behind me. I was taking my time. I, the track's really difficult tonight, and I figured, you know, if I can try and make as least mistakes as possible for 20 laps, then I would assume that he would be able to, he would drop off the pace a little bit. So I was just trying to ride my own race, and I wasn't even looking at my own pit board. <laughs> it's often a good job, Jack. Thanks a lot. I'd like to thank Mazda, 800 Collect, Chaparral, No Fear. And uh, my mechanic, Randy Lawrence, trainer, Corey Worf, and all the whole team. Thanks. Jeremy McGrath taking a 57-point lead over Mike LaRocco. The big change, of course, is Ezra Lusk uh, bouncing up into third place in the points. Only one point in front of Larry Ward for shown rounding out the top five. Let's return now to Davy Coombs on the victory podium. Yogi, you didn't get to start out with Jeremy, but I tell you what, you made it interesting there at the end. Way to come back. Yeah, you know, Davey, I felt really, really good, and it's really good to be up here again and get the confidence back going, get up and uh, run for the lead, and uh, be on Jeremy's pace. We felt really good. Three races to go in the series. You going to let it all hang out and go after McGrath? You know, I really want to be smart. I want to finish this year and uh, try to find that consistency and find that smoothness and strength that I, I need to, for the whole year. And uh, I'm looking forward, and I'm going to find it. All the support from Honda and Dunlop and Fox, I'll find it. All right, good luck, Aaron. Thanks. Join us on Saturday, April 24th, for our next telecast from New Orleans at 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. That's Saturday, April 24th, from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern.
segment for David Bailey and David Coombs. Thanking you for enjoying Supercross with us from the Pontiac Silver.